Welcome to Jets Rewind. I'm Marty Schupack in Valley Cottage, New York. I'm joined by my two very close friends, Ralph Schoreg in Belmont, Mass., and Ray Clifford, who uh, is from Marysville, Ohio, but he's on his way to the uh, Columbus Clippers uh, hockey game. Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets. Oh, Jackets. I'm sorry. So I'm Columbus Clippers. You're thinking the L.A. Clippers, right? They're, they're, the everyone Yankees. makes those two teams up. I think the Yankee Clippers. The Yankee, the Yankee Clippers, Yankees yeah. The Columbus Clippers. Yeah. So Ray is on to it. Is it a they game? They aren't anymore, though. Ray, is it a game? Yeah, it's their home opener. Oh, it's their home opener. Ray is a huge huge uh, hockey fan. Not as much as a Jet fan, but he, he's no. big, big with hockey. Well, uh, right? after last night, he is, I'm sure. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but meanwhile, uh, we're here and uh, we're recording this uh, less than 12 hours after the uh, Jets. Again, They this is getting repetitive. They lost the game. They should have won 23 to 20 to Buffalo Bills. And I just want to have a couple of opening comments, but it seems that I always make the opening comments about the game first. So I'm going to yield, Ralph, I'm going to ask you to make any sort of 30 second or one minute or even longer opening comment, then Ray will go, then I'll go. Go ahead, Ralph. Well, you know, unfortunately it started out pretty good. The offense suddenly looked better uh, under Todd Downing. But, uh, you know, they left so many points on the field and, and penalties. Well, Buffalo got as many as they did. I mean, the officials, I mean, they, they must uh, put their arms in ice after tossing all those yellow flags. <laughs> the second half was an awful game. It was really, uh, the first half was fun, but the second half was awful. Uh, the Jets have now lost three straight games that they could have won. Any decent team, any mediocre team would have won and found a way to win at least one of them and would have put the Jets in a nice position. But, of course, this being the Jets, this is the way it works with us. And, of course, today uh, the Jets found themselves on the front page again. Uh, they, You know, for a team that hasn't made the playoffs in 15 years, they, they are like front and center so much it's crazy. Uh, we'll talk about what we think about you know, our newest addition. But uh, last night's game, you know, if it, I watched the Met game before that, and I was so stressed out by that at the end uh, <laughs> that I really had nothing left to give in the in the uh, in the Jets game. I was just sitting there, just sort of numb because I was so exhausted emotionally from the Mets game. But uh, so it was probably a blessing in disguise, Russ. I would have pulled out my last hair. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Ray, who um, for all of those who are watching us on the Shupak Sports YouTube channel, if you don't see Ray, he's driving, and uh, just like uh, me, he's not great with technology. He can't get his camera on his beautiful new Samsung phone to work while he's driving to, to downtown Columbus, Ohio. So, Ray, let's have a couple of your thoughts about the game. Uh. I did like the offense in general. It was better. But, again, the de I don't know what's going on with our defense. We can't stop anybody from running on us. It, you know, that first drive by Buffalo was just, you know, incredible how many chunk plays they did all the way down the field. And uh, so that was, uh, that was one problem that uh, I had with them. Um, yeah, the refs were going crazy with flags. It seemed like uh, every, you know, every every series had. I, I don't think we went more than a few plays without one, one way or another. Um, I, I know at the end of the game, you know, it, it it obviously didn't go well. How often does the kicker hit the upright twice in a game, <laughs> and and. Uh, you know, then everybody was saying uh, Rogers was throwing Mike Williams under the bus. I didn't feel that way because at least not in the clip I saw when he was explaining what happened. Um, it seemed like, you know, he was just saying this is what, what went wrong. Um, disappointing, though, because we should have three straight wins under our belt. And instead, we're, you know, it's just the opposite. And, uh, you know, they got to turn it around quick. And I'm not, not sure if we have the guys to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thanks, Ray. But this is my feelings, and we'll get into it deeper. Um, <clears throat> for Jet fans that think that the horrible referee and cost us the game, it did not. Um, it was a no. twenty-two penalties. It was an awful 
rough game, but the Jets, as usual, kept shooting themselves in the foot. They didn't make the plays they should have made. Um, and I, to me, it goes back, and I don't know why at that third down play, Brees Hall didn't have both his hands up for that reception. And uh, it just seemed after that, they were just so lucky to kind of stay in it. It was an awful game to watch with this refereeing. I thought that Aaron Rodgers was brilliant. I really did. I thought he made some great plays. They left so many points on the on the um, field. I thought that um, Michael Clemens, uh, if it was me, I would cut him today. I don't know who I'm going to replace him with. I think that um, I don't care what anyone says. Uh, Queen and Williams is not playing up to his ability. I don't care if he's double or triple team. On the other team, the other team in New York has a player, Dexter Lawrence, who's double and triple team. He's got seven sacks. And right now, Queen and Williams couldn't hold a candle to Dexter Lawrence. I think the Jets miss Jermaine Johnson a lot more than we realized. Uh, he was improving game by game. I think they have to sign Reddick, though. I understand that Drew Rosenhaus is also making calls about uh, getting a trade. The Jets have given him permission. But it just, I was sickened by that game. I had to drive up to Boston today on business, and I just got back and um, did a lot of thinking about the whole game and about the, the coaching staff. And I, I again, there's never a moral victory in the NFL, but if there's any silver lining, I thought that Todd Downing was uh, was very good as a as a as an offensive coordinator, and I love the um, the motion plays that he had. Um, and I saw a note uh, Michael Nanny put out a stat that the Jets used pre snap motion on a season high seventy two point nine percent of their plays last night. And average a fantastic 7.7 .7 yards per play with motion. You average 7.7 .7 yards per play with motion, you got to score more points than they did. And they just, it's the same old thing where they can't punch it in with the red zone. I mean, it's just incredible what, what went on last night. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I could pick apart a lot of different things. As Ralph said and Ray, the opening drive, the, the holes that you could fit a Mack truck through was ridiculous. The hand tackling in the first half with uh, Brees Hall and, and Reed was awful. There was a this guy Davis from Kentucky who I followed there. He And I'm happy for the kid because he had a rough upbringing. But this one early play where he was sweeping around the right side, the angle that Sauce Garner took to get him, it was unbelievable. He ended up getting 11 yards. And on offense, this uh, Tyron Smith, his play at left tackle is so bad. I mean, he, he makes us want to get Mekhi Becton back. And then today I got to hear our coach say that he's playing some good football and he's a great addition in the room. I'm telling you, if our first round pick isn't in there Sunday night against Pittsburgh, I think I, I don't know what I'm going to do. They have to make some personnel changes. They can't keep it the way it is. It's just they they make their worst plays at the most important time. I've never seen a team like this over and over and over again. It's the same script. And then I'm going to turn it over to Ralph because today as we wake up before the ink dries on the uh, New York Post, about the game, the Jets uh, picked up Devontae Adams. So I want your reaction. And Ralph, could you tell us the details of that trade? So they uh, the conditions are that the uh, if, if Adams makes first or second team all pro, which is highly unlikely because he hasn't hardly done anything so far, uh, or the Jets, he, he's active, and when, and when the Jets are in the AFC Championship or Super Bowl, which I would gladly take and give a second round pick for, then they drive it drops to a second round pick. If not, it's a third round pick. I think he's signed for two years. It's not guaranteed. So I could see maybe next year if things worked out well and you know restructuring his con his contract. We're not paying him the crazy money that he's getting like all these other receivers. Uh, Ralph, uh, let me interrupt. I saw again. I'm just. 
going by memory. Somebody printed it. I think it's twelve million the first year. The second and third have to be restructured. It's a ridiculous sum, like so yes, in the thirties. Uh, twenty-two and twenty-five. I thought I saw. I oh, couldn't. Was it twenty-two recall. and twenty-five? Yeah, but um, all right. Let me ask you this, Ralph. What's your initial reaction <laughs> to the trade? And this is stacked upon uh, the in last interception where uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, detailed the wrong route running by Mike Williams, who I think is on the training block from what I hear. Well, you know, the crazy thing is the, I don't know, did you ever see the end of the Minnesota game, Marty? The, where the I did not. Play? It was a very similar play. He's throwing, Mike Williams is going down the right side. He underthrows it. And the uh, guy, the uh, defensive back uh, cuts in front and, and grabs it by basically on his knees. It's almost an identical play. Um, what I think of this is, you know what? They were only giving up a third-round pick. Douglas got that third-round pick by giving up a fourth-round pick in this year's draft from Detroit. So it's not much you're giving up, and except for the money. And, frankly, I don't care about the money. We've been tormented for 25 years under Woody Johnson. Let him spend some money. If it works out, fine. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I read a very funny line, which is uh, trading for uh, Devontae Adams is kind of like the couple – that has a bad marriage and they're trying to have one more child to save the marriage. Uh, and <laughs> I, fine. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I mean, he's, he, you really think that he's, uh, I, I think that they're going to try and sign uh, Reddick too, rather than trade him. It seems like, you know, they, you know, just try everything. Uh, and like I said, I don't care about the money anymore. I'm sick and tired. Right. Of all, yeah. I, no, I, no, I, Ralph, I'm just agreeing. I'm nodding my head and saying, right. They, they're going to have to like overpay him for one year. It's yeah. It'll be a deal like that. Ray, what's your feeling about the trade? Then I'll give you my feeling. Uh, I, I'm okay with it. I mean, like you say, as long as they can restructure it, if they want to keep him past this year, but um, you know, if they aren't going to protect Aaron, I'm not sure it's going to make a ton of difference at this point. Um, but it's somebody who, you know, I think Garrett Wilson will be the one that will benefit from it because, right. you know, they're going to start focusing on uh, Adams and uh, that's going to make Garrett that much more dangerous. So, uh, I I mean, offensively, I think it'll help, but the offensive line still is scary and it can, you know, it can ruin everything, which uh, I know you said we can't pick up a yard well we did pick up a yard and got in the end zone but we got called for a holding on the play too and so that bumped us back and we ended up settling for the, the field goal on that one um so that, it just does it we we just don't have a consistency of being able to run we don't have a consistency of protecting aaron so adams can make a difference but i'm not sure how much okay all right, uh, I'll tell you my thoughts. I, is that it, Ray? Or do you want to add anything? No, no, that you know, that's about it. Yeah. Um, if you ask me, like I think forty-eight or seventy-two hours, I'd say I I, I wouldn't want to make the trade, but now I I do. I'm happy they did, and uh, you know, it reminds me, and coincidentally, uh, this afternoon Amari Cooper was traded to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah or something, but it reminded me, and Ray, you could bear me out, I believe it was 2018 where Dallas was like two and four. They could have been two and five. They traded for Amari Cooper, and I'm not saying he was the main cog, but they ended up turning the season around. Now, of course, their offensive line at the time was much better than the Jets, yeah, they had Tyrone Smith when he could play. <laughs> yeah. And and they ended up winning their division. I believe they beat Seattle in the first round. I think they lost to the uh, Rams in the second round. But the point is, they traded for Amari Cooper. He ended up, um, I think he started, uh, actually, I'm, I just drew it up right now. He started, I believe, nine games. He had uh, 53 catches, six touchdowns. You know, if we get a production like that, I, I think it's I think it's a real good trade. I could see 
and everyone could see how frustrated that our quarterback is. And as bad as he played the game before, I thought he was very, very good. And he wants guys, you know, we could say whatever we want about how many times that um, uh, Lazard drops footballs or is in the wrong position. But it's obvious that there's some sort of chemistry with them. And they know how to read off each other. If you look now, I mean, Lazard has like five touchdown catchers. I think that's possibly one of the leaders in the NFL, which is incredible. So I think it's a good trade. Let's see what happens. I, I personally think they shouldn't stop there. I believe what Ralph's been saying for two or three weeks. The Jets will go as far as their offensive line will take them. I truly believe they should bring up Xavier Newman, who wasn't that good last year. I thought he was the most improved Jet in preseason. I wouldn't mind if we trade that other third-round pick for another guy that might be sitting on the bench as a backup who Joe Douglas thinks is good, maybe a guard-tackle combination. Every week we see like Carter Warren and Max Mitchell, either one or both are not active, and something's going on there. I was never impressed with Carter Warren. I thought he'd get better with his knee. So my opinion is I think it's a good trade, and I think – Again, they have to somehow do something with this offensive line, and we got to get Olu Fashano starting on Sunday night. You can't put this Tyron Smith back there. He's just, you just can't do it. And again, I think Michael Clemens and I had text you both guys that before the play when um, Josh Allen got the first down, and I'm sure you both knew it too. I think Michael Clemens is the only one on earth that didn't know that. Josh Allen's going to keep the ball. So, you know, it's to me, I, Ralph and Ray, I get so frustrated when I think back that we point out things and it takes them so long and they end up doing what we're doing and it seems to work out. And just a few weeks ago, we were saying, like, even Ralph said, you have to change who returns the kickoff. And Isaiah Davis had, he returned one kickoff. He looked really good. So also if, they uh, we've been saying you know run outside the tackles run outside the tackle they finally did that last night Brees Hall gets over a hundred yards you know I mean I, I don't know what these guys have been doing their whole life they've been in football their whole adult life and and uh, and as Marty as far as uh, Tyron Smith goes I hate to say it but he will play this is a this team these guys are loyal to guys like that they they revere a guy like uh, Tyron Smith even though he's terrible. Um, they, they, that cost us two games because we kept uh, Greg the leg when we shouldn't have even because we could see in pre in uh, in the preseason that he was having trouble. Right. And, and Ray, you know, you, you say that uh, it's unusual. It is unusual for a guy to hit the upright twice, but he keeps making the same kick every time. You know, he keeps uh, was it, were they both on the left upright? I think one one was on the right upright. I'm not was sure. it? Yeah, yeah. might have been. <laughs> But yeah, you, you know he overcorrects. Uh, other than that one on the right upright, everything he kicks just makes it either inside the left upright or it goes wide. Now last night it hit it. I don't know what's going on with him. He's obviously lost his confidence. If we're stuck with this guy for the whole year. There's going to be more of this. And well, what's his name? Seabird is is killing it in Washington. It's driving me crazy. He made um, a fifty five yarder Sunday. He would have made it seventy five yards. I'm telling you, it was right down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. Ray, if if Tyron Smith remains at left tackle, how long do you think uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to last during the season? Ray? I think we lost Ray. I think we lost Ray. You know, oh, yeah. uh, oh, there he is. Oh, oh yeah, now we hear you. Yeah. Um, you yeah I'm going to mute you in a second, though. Um, uh, no, I, yeah. Um, I, I, that's my fear, is it? We, you know, we bring in Adams, we do this stuff to help the offense more, but we aren't doing anything more to protect him. I mean, they, they tried in the off season, but, you know, clearly this, this offensive line hasn't gelled. I don't know if they will, but uh, the, the longer it goes, uh, every, every game he's getting hit, you know, so. Well, you know. Here, here's, here's another thing. Why aren't, the, why aren't they giving uh Tyron Smith a little help getting the running back on that side for a chip almost yeah. 
every play that they know is going to – Yeah, you know, I mean, they'll probably figure that out in another three weeks. Uh, yeah, when Rodgers goes down. Um, yeah, or, or put a tight end, somebody out there, just somebody on the outside for some help. He got he got uh, faked out by the – I think it's Adesmo was the guy. Yeah. He gave him a little shimmy shake and then just went around him on one of the stacks. I was just like – he just doesn't have a quick reaction, and I'm sure that's uh, yeah. a lot to do with his age now. But he, you know, he gets these guys that are smaller and quicker, kind of like with Beckton. Just it's too much for him. He doesn't handle the quick guys. Yeah, and just so you guys know, I just went to um, Sp- Spot Track. I think that's what you call it. The three free agent kickers available are Brandon McManus, who's 33. Riley Patterson, who's 26, they were both with Washington, and an old jet, Randy Bullock, who's 30, almost 35. So there's not much there, but I'll be honest with you, I would bring them in and I would put whoever they like on the practice squad during the week and then decide on Sunday what you're going to do. I mean, it's just, you know, we're just giving games away, giving them away. It's unbelievable. Every stinking week, we're giving games away. And I just, you know, they got to make personnel decisions. I don't, just don't get it. Um, I just want to mention, too, that... Um, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. Let me just get the right screen up. Ralph, what did you... What was your take on uh, Mike Williams and what do you think is going to happen with him? Well, you know, obviously, they, there's no room for this guy anymore. You know, uh, Ulrich says, you know, he's we're not done with him yet, you know, implying that he'll still be a factor. But, you know, after six games, he's hardly done anything. <clears throat> and then you add Devontae Adams. I mean, it's pretty obvious that he's not going to get any time. Um, if he can get something for him, I'll, I, I guess I would do it because I think it's a it's not a good situation. I guess they could keep him as depth piece in case someone gets hurt. Uh, but if nobody does get hurt, and, and obviously Devontae Adams has made a miracle recovery from his hamstring the moment he, the moment he got traded, uh, which <laughs> which makes me wonder about his character. But uh, uh, I, I think, you know, he's just going to be on the bench. He's not going to see very much time. I mean, he doesn't even pass to the tight ends. And, you know, I think uh, I think a lot of uh, Tyler Conklin – uh, so he's he's not going to throw it, Michael Michael Williams, unless there, you know, other guys no, are injured. No, he he's done. He's not going to throw to him. Ray, uh, would you do this trade right now, Mike Williams and a, and the, uh, and a number three pick, the second number three pick, Bajavian Clowney of Carolina? They both make ten million dollars. Uh. It'd be how's, worth how's, a try, Clowney, how's Clowney doing this year? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Ray, Ray could tell you, I've always liked him. I know he never played up to his ability. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I think he'd be an upgrade, but not. A, I don't think he'd be a huge upgrade. But, I mean, he's – you know, we got to do something to get some pressure off the edge. And it looks like they're going to end up trading Reddick anyway. So that, you know, that sounds like that's never going to happen. But um, he gave, they gave, I believe, the agents – Got they gave the just gave the agents like a twelve hour window to try and find a trade partner for Reddick and something tells me they'll find one. Um, well, but so, I, well, what is Douglas going to uh, be accept? Do you think he's going to just take a, a late pick? Um, well, I don't know about a late pick, but uh, probably not as high as we gave up, but um, maybe a mid rounder. Well, well, you know, the, yeah, the obvious team is the Lions now. Uh, yeah, I was just going to yeah, say, Ray, yeah. Ray they, they've only given them, what, 24 hours? What did you say? Well, well, that's what it said uh, that I read. They, they uh, gave a 24-hour window for them to to work out a trade. I, so. I, I would give them, like, till Monday. I mean, with the way these players are going down, I mean, um, I know Hutchison's out for a while, but also – Oh, he's out for the year. Yeah, yeah, and they <laughs> lost the second defensive lineman, too. He's out. Yeah, so, and that team is serious. You know, they, they're, yeah, they're you up know. there. They're ready to go. So let me just go through a couple of stats, um, and then we'll talk more about the game. Rodgers was 23 for 35, 294 yards, two TDs, one interception, a 99 rating, 
Brees Hall, 18 carries for 113 yards. Again, he tripped once or twice. I thought. Yeah, he, he every game he seems to trip a couple. What, what is, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know. Uh, uh, Bray, Braylon Allen, three carries for eight. <clears throat> Should have been about 12 or 13. He had a touchdown, but it got called back. Receiving, uh, Lazard, six for 114, a touchdown with that the Hail Mary. Garrett Wilson, eight for 13.4, uh, touchdown. Brees Hall, six for 56. And I'm glad they're using him more and more like that. Tyler Conklin, two for 10. Jeremy Rucker, two for seven. Quick question to each of you. There were two passes, one to Garrett Wilson in the end zone that he got sandwiched, and there was another one to Jeremy Ruckett. I'll start with Ralph. Do you think either or both should have caught the ball? Ruckett's play, no way. That guy timed it, so he he met him just when the ball was there. Garrett Wilson, I've seen guys catch that. I've seen guys not catch a pass like that. So, yeah, he oh, could have guys? caught it. He could have caught it. He would have taken a – you know, he took a, a shot. But uh, – I would say I would give him a 50-50 on that. I, I, I think I think uh, he I think he could have caught it. Uh it would have been a great play, but uh it's unfortunate. All right. Ray, what's your feeling each catch? Um I don't remember the Ruckert one as well, but uh, the Garrett Wilson one I thought, you know, that would have been a hell of a catch if he'd have held on, but I'm not gonna bash him for not holding on. I mean that got he got hit pretty good both from behind and in front. The guy that hit him from the front kind of hit him in the arm and stuff where the ball was. So, you know, I would have loved it if he had hung on. I mean, it would have been a tough – it would have been a tough grab, though. Uh, Let me ask you this, Ray, and I know he's a he has a bigger frame. Do you think Justin Jefferson catches that ball? Yeah, I mean, you know, he could have, but, you know – Jefferson makes a bunch of tough catches, but I don't know that I've seen a lot of his tough catches come when you're getting hit that way. I mean, he makes a bunch of acrobatic catches and, and hangs on, but I don't know that I've seen him make a whole bunch when he's getting, you know, drilled right as the ball gets there. I, I think a tight end, a tight end probably could have held on to that. He would have yeah, absorbed, that's what absorbed it. Conklin might have. Yeah. yeah. But, but my point is this, it's better. If, if Garrett Wilson and he's putting up some good numbers the last uh, couple of weeks, last two or three weeks. If he really wants to be considered a number one uh, receiver, I think he's got to make that catch. I know I'm a tough crowd and all that, but yeah, I, think yeah. that I think he's got to make right. the catch. Well, you know, every time is different. Maybe the next time he does, but that's just, to me, that's just, if you're expecting him to make that catch every time, I think you're just, you know, expecting – you're you're making a wish that it isn't going to come true all the time. I mean that's that any, anybody could have dropped that, you know, and and anybody could have held on to it if if it hit if he doesn't hit him just right. I don't know that it does come out, but yeah, right, yeah. right. All right, I, I'm going to make a quick announcement too. Then we'll continue with the stats. I we have a very very good fan, and uh, he probably knows more football about. Uh, more jet football than uh, some of us. But Jim Miller wrote me a very nice uh, email and his suggestion, and we're going to do it, about uh, taking mail. So I just want to read my email. It's greenrewind at gmail.com. I'll repeat it. The color green, rewind, R-E-W-I-N-D, at gmail.com. You could address it to either all three of us or individually, whatever you want to do, and we'll start to have a mailbag. And if you just put in the subject, uh, Jets Rewind, so I don't delete it. Okay. All right. Let's move on. A couple of other stats. Uh, oh, by the way, R Ralph, you you're going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> when can the Jets ever recover a fumble that's right near? I mean... <sighs> Quincy Williams, I mean, I, was his hands on that ball? Uh, a couple of guys had a shot at that one. <clears throat> and then an offensive lineman from the Buffalo team was able to grab it. And then the one, uh, the other one, which got called you know, a, a forward pass when Rodgers fumbled the ball 
and Tyrone Smith was the only guy within 50 yards of it. He, he got, jumps down on it and it just squirts through his legs. It was like <laughs> physically impossible. It's like, I don't know what that guy can do that isn't wrong. It's like, he's like, he's like Rongo Starr, like it's Tim right. Conway characters. <laughs> yeah. You know, what got me on that one was I was, I didn't understand what took so long on the review on that one. I mean, right. it was. Yeah. First time you looked at it, Rogers arm was going forward. I don't know what the deal was. Right here, this one's for you. Uh, it was last week that Source Garner had like uh, three penalties in the same series, and he he dropped a uh, interception right in his hand. It was like a football made out of a newspaper rolled up. Was that that series worse than the play <laughs> with Javon Kinlaw? Javon Kinlaw, yeah. When he had like the three penalties, it was the three. Which was worse, Ray? Um, I thought Sauce had the worst series on single series I've ever seen a player have between the three three penalties and and the drop pick and in, in the same series. That to me, I've never seen anybody have right. something that bad. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Let me continue uh, the stats defense. Uh, Jamie Sherwood had uh, 13 tackles, but to me, he was invisible the first quarter and a half. 13? That's 13, yeah. Solo seven plus seven solo yeah. assisted. The first, wow. Me, oh, this one I want to talk about because he made one play the whole game, but when our safety went out, they put in Ashton Davis. It was so obvious they were targeting wherever Ashton Davis was. They probably told Josh Allen, Look at number 21. That's where I want you to go with the ball, either run or pass. Ashton Davis had nine tackles, six solo. That, that's such a deceptive stat. He, and Tony Adams, Mr. B uh, Bubble Wrap, as Ralph calls him, eight tackles, six solo. Quincy Williams, again, six uh, tackles, two solo. He's got to do better. I don't want him to turn into Mo Wilkerson. Uh, you talking about? Did they just say Quincy or Quinn? Oh no, I'm sorry, Quincy Williams. Yeah, I'm sorry, Quinn and Williams had three tackles, and uh, they gave him credit for a sack. Which, uh, by the way, this was Quincy Williams' first game that he didn't play particularly well. He didn't play well. Yeah, he didn't play well. Chuck Clark had four tackles before he went out. Brandon Nichols had four. Uh, Kinlaw, well, I Kinlaw, oh, God. <laughs> He, him, and, and Michael Clemens. Oh my! <laughs> Kinlaw had three, three tackles. Michael Clemens had two. Um, Will McDonald had two tackles. He had a sack. They gave him credit for. Well, you know what play that was? That was the play where where um, Josh Allen fumbled. He had him by the legs, and he was falling down. Oh, yeah. He fumbled. I I guess you call that a sack and a forced fumble. But right, uh, right. right. I'll, let me say this about uh, Will McDonald. You know he's he's got sacks, but he he doesn't have he doesn't put pressure on consistently. But I watch him closely every game, and he gets held and never gets a call, just like Jermaine Johnson. It right. pisses yeah. me off to see that call against Tyrone Smith, which had nothing to do with the play, and they call yeah. that back. And, and and I see the officials are looking right at him, you know, and I, it really it gets a little frustrating. Although he. He's got to lift his game up a little bit. I, you know, he was trying power rushes the whole game. I don't know why he wasn't doing any of his spin moves right. or whatever. Yeah. Maybe it's because of Josh Allen. They wanted to keep containment on him. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I thought the same. Oh, Ray, do you want to say, say add something to that? No, I agree. I just still think Will needs to put on weight. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing for him. But hey, I'm just warning you, my. Uh, your piece might go out at any minute, so you might. All right, me. raise here like uh, as a bonus if we can't finish. Okay, uh, I thought that um, um, what the safety they put in, what's his name, uh, Isaiah Oliver. I thought he did pretty good. He's yeah. They should play him over he Ashton gotta, Davis. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I don't know the with the seriousness of uh, Chuck Clark's injury, but uh, absolutely, mm. it's not even close. And Ralph, your man, uh, Eric Watts got. Uh, he got a half a tackle or Ready something. For a yeah. tackle, yeah. Charles Surratt won. <laughs> and C.J. Mosey was back, but I, to me, it's so obvious that our linebackers are quicker when he's not in there. You know, and I didn't realize he was back until I saw his number, and I was like, "Yeah, really." It seemed like he was on the field at the same time. 
Yeah, I, I don't know why, though. Why are they continuing that alignment where they put three defensive linemen on one side and one on the other, and it's like, here, go right through the yeah. middle, folks, and they all do it, and, yeah. <laughs> and they keep coming back and doing it. I mean, it, right. it was stunning on the one. I don't know if it was fourth down or third and one they went for it, and they showed the replay, and nobody's to the right, to the left side of Allen on the line on defensively. I mean, it was it was like he didn't – all he had to do was snap the ball and literally walk to the left, and he would have made the yard he needed. It was it was stunning right. that there wasn't somebody on the, the whole line wasn't covered on that. I don't know. They never did this the last two years. Now they're doing it. They started in the San Francisco game. It worked horribly, and it's like let's keep doing it until it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what what is going on? I, you know, this really this coaching staff. I really think it stinks. I really they they just take so long for them to figure stuff out. Right. I just want to read a couple of uh, not that many stats for uh, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Josh Allen, 19 for 25, 216 yards, two TDs. His quarterback rating was 127.9. Ray Davis had uh, 20 rushes for 97 yards. He also had three receptions for 66. And Dalton Kincaid was killing us. Six receptions for 51 a play I want to point out, he really stood out to me. They have this, I guess he's a cornerback. I don't know if, Ralph, you know anything about him. No, well, yeah. Uh, he, seven, uh, Tyron Johnson? He, no, no, no. The other guy, Rapp or whatever his name was. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Taylor yeah, Rapp. Rapp, number nine. Yeah. yeah, he's the guy that kept coming up. And he's the one who also tackled Brees Hall when he should have scored a touchdown on the long run. Right. That was a good play. I don't know why Brees Hall, in an open field, he couldn't get by him. But the one thing I want to mention about – what exemplifies Tyron Smith, there was a sweep around the left side. And there, oh, yeah, there was one, it, Tyron Smith's ahead of Brees Hall. He wasn't going to break it. There was one guy, all he had to do was get in front of him. Tyron Smith fanned so bad, the guy tackled Brees Hall just for a two-yard gain. That should have went for 10, 15, or 20 yards. I was out of everything he did wrong, <laughs> even with the sack that killed our quarterback. To me, that was a sickening play. I couldn't stand it. I just want him off the field. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, he's a disease. He uh, he is a disease these days. There's no question right. about it. You know, it reminded me of that play <clears throat> that uh, those those three or four plays that uh, that you could see on YouTube about like, Brendan Bates the week before when he was like running around trying to block someone and he was just oh, <laughs> whiffing that left and right. yeah, <laughs> that was yeah, this was the uh, continuation of that with Tyron right, Smith. Right. Uh Ray, did you realize who the uh the running back was for the Bills Thank number twenty six? I will Thank you. What Ray, was that? Did you realize who the running back for the Bills was, number twenty six? Yeah, oh yeah. He First play well. of the game. Yeah, yeah. First play of the game, he went for like five, or six, or seven yeah, yards. Yeah, he was he was a decent player for the Jets. I, I I didn't mind him at all. Uh, no, I liked Ty, him. Ty Johnson. Yeah, Ty Johnson. Yeah, from Maryland. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, so yeah, that was that was disappointing to see him on. on of course, he scored on us last year after he went to Buffalo, and I think the second game we played him or something. But uh, yeah. Uh, hey, on the, the one second touchdown pass by uh, Josh Allen, that's the one that irritated me the most because they had him in the pocket. They had him stacked, and he broke out of it and then ran to the side, and then the, the tight end caught that uh, touchdown on, on Quincy. But it should have been a sack. It never should have happened. Which was the one It was near the goal line, or maybe I'm mixing it up, was, and we should have had him. Was it Michael Clemens on the inside? It looked like we were going to sack. It could have been Clemens. I'm, I'm not sure who didn't sack him, but uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I was with was my fr oh, yeah. Go on, Rick. No, I was going to say, was that the first one or the second one? I thought that was the second one. I don't remember. They, um, but, no, uh, I, don't, I, I'm not sure. I was with my friend today, who's a you know a longtime Patriots fan, and I was telling him that this was really the first great game that Allen has played against the Jets. I mean, he's just never been that good against them. That statistic they showed 
on TV that he has 18 turnovers against the Jets, which is the yeah. most in the league. Right. Points it out. And, you know, my, my friend laughed. He said, Josh Allen is, has been killing the Patriots, playing like this every game against them. He gets, There were games when they never even punted. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I was stunned so, he didn't give up at least one pick. <laughs> Yeah, he I didn't even come. They didn't one. even come close. And Marty, no, your your favorite um, assistant coach, Tony Oden. I mean, right. is he going to teach his goddamn defensive backs to stop grabbing all the time? Oh. I mean, don't they realize that it's not allowed? Is somebody going to tell them that? I, <laughs> it's I know, just absurd. Right. It's just yeah, I I agree. I I want to get into one other thing before we close this out. So Ray could go through the uh, security. What's the name of the arena, Ray? There. What's that? What's the name of What's... the arena? Where you Nationwide go? Arena. Okay. Nation. It's Beautiful on your arena. side, yeah. Yes, right. it is. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, I mentioned the Amari Cooper trade to Buffalo uh, right after the Jets got Adams. And um, it, it was announced uh, today that um, – uh, Mike uh, Tomlin, the coach of Pittsburgh, he's giving uh, Russell Wilson uh, first string snaps, even though they're four and two. I just wanted the reaction. I'll start with Ray first. Ray, well, I was I'm happy to hear that. I I mean, I'm I was more scared of Justin Fields because he's playing like people thought he would coming out of Ohio State, but you know Chicago is basically in our boat with their offensive line and stuff. So all he did was run for his life, but. He knew to run down the field, not just run in circles behind the line like someone else we know. But um, fifty dollars, Ray, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> the big Z, who's by the way, his brother's now starting for Utah in college. It looks looks just like him. But yeah, um, well, uh, so I, I'm ha I, I think we can, you know, I think we can get to Russell Wilson, I, I, and he might be a little rusty. So I'm I'm fine with that. How about you, Ralph? I, I, I'm surprised that he's doing it. I know, you know, Fields has not been great, but a team like the Jets, I feel like Fields could run for 150 yards against them. He scares the heck out of me with for his legs, not particularly his yeah. arm. But uh, and I'm shocked that Tom is going to do it. We'll see. Uh, I, I, you know, I'll believe it when I see it on, on Sunday night. I oh. think they're going to mix them up so that they aren't, you know, I don't think it's going to be all Wilson or, or all Fields. I think they're going to have both of them in there at different points. Uh, you know what I think? I, I think it's going to be Fields. I think he's just throwing that it out. It should be. To, yeah, it should be. I think he's just throwing that out, playing a little Bill Belichick. Let, let me Could, be. Could be. And see how they who they prepare for. Let, let me make it harder for them. Yeah. By the way, Pittsburgh, yeah. typical, you know, they, they struggle. They're not that great a team, but they find a way to be four and two. Whereas the yep. Jets, who are great. probably at least as good a team as they are personnel wise, two and four. And you know, it's yep. it's just the same thing every year. They have a great coach. And Ray, you, they got TJ Watt. And who's the other guy? Cam, what's his name? The lineman? Cam he, Hayward. Hayward. I don't know how I they deal Hayward. with those two guys. I mean, TJ Watt, Ray, do you know which side he comes off the line on the defensive side? Of the I think team? they I think they switch him back and forth, but I think usually he's I, I've seen him coming, I believe, from the left. I could, yeah, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he can do either side, though. So, I, he, you know, yeah, he's a he's a factor. Ray, Ralph pointed out, and you agree with him a few weeks ago, I didn't pay that much attention, but the way it's going, the 40-year-old body of Aaron Rodgers, he can't last the whole season. Yeah, that's, that's what I said. I mean, bringing in Adams is great, but, you know, if he's, if he's getting decked all the time, how – is he going to be throwing to Adams the whole year? Right. Well, hey, I think I think your biggest hope is that <clears throat> Tyrone Smith's back uh, goes yep, out trying to lift up <laughs> Rodgers every time his guy knocks him down. He looks <laughs> horrified. I have to say, yeah, I think I think Tyrone Smith is absolutely humiliated with the way he plays. It's like, uh, <clears throat> I, I, yeah, I don't think he's happy about it either. He knows he's getting whipped. Of course, he has the coach sticking up for him, but we'll see. Yeah. All right. If you ask before we close this out, I don't know if we're going to do a review game. It's going to be a tough weekend for Marty Shupak. It's always a tough weekend. I got, I got one pet peeve I want to talk about. And it's okay. not necessarily about the Jets, okay. about that Hail Mary play. 
And I think one of the reasons Rodgers does well with the Hail Mary plays because I see he really puts a lot of air under the ball, so yep. it gives the guys time to get set. But yep. you know, if you're the, if you're rooting for the defensive team, the Hail Mary is such a stressful play, and I don't know what the hell every one of these defensive guys wants to be a hero and try and intercept it rather than yep. spike the damn ball like yeah. a volleyball. I mean, down. God, I, I mean, if I was the Buffalo fan, I would have kick my TV in. It's just so ridiculous that they always do that. Everyone everyone is looking for those fantasy sport points for the fans. <laughs> for whatever reason. Well, I don't know if they end up uh if they end up getting compensation somewhere down the road somehow, but they everybody's like a fantasy player. We've always said it for years how the Jet defenders, if they would just tackle the guys below the waist rather than trying to knock the ball out. Oh, DJ Reed had one of those with his goddamn shoulder tackle yesterday, yeah. which was pathetic. Yeah. I mean, you know, these guys have been in the league. Don't they have this proper tackling? Don't they teach them yeah. that? I mean, it's like, wrap somebody up, you yeah. know, get your arms around him. Especially when it's a guy who's too big for you. You can't. What are you going to do with a guy? He bounced off him like a, like a Super oh, yeah. Bowl. <laughs> That's just it. They think they're bigger than they are. A quick, right. quick couple things on that uh, Hail Mary. I was, Let me just say I was one going thing, right? this island. Oh, yeah. Right, what? Say one yeah. thing. R Ralph always likes to take a dig at me. He's he's, he's he <laughs> doesn't like Tony Odin, who I like. So I so, don't mind him, but he's obviously his guys are not uh, right. doing what they should. Yeah, right. Ray, Ray, what you are you going to say? Go ahead, Ray. I was going to say uh, I was calling for him to throw the sideline on that Hail Mary play. And then I watched the Manning cast, a clip from that, and Belichick's on there. And right up there, stand the ball. He goes, I'd hail Mary it. I'd hail Mary it. <laughs> hey, <laughs> another pet like, peeve oh that the coaches do, which is really stupid. And Buffalo rushed only two guys. You know, with yeah. Aaron Rodgers being immobile. <laughs> I think that's why I, I said it, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I mean, th these, these, these dumb things that these coaches do, yeah. and they've been in football for so long, it's just unbelievable. You know, you, you find a coach who's smarter than everyone else, who who thinks a little differently, but most of them, they, they, you know, they just follow each other. And, and <laughs> right. it's amazing. What else, Ray? Anything else about the Hail Mary? No, I was, you know, I think that's why Belichick called for the uh, – <clears throat> called for the Hail Mary because he saw two guys were – only two guys were rushing him when they snapped the ball. So I think that's when he started going, I'd Hail Mary it. And yeah, I, sure. I mean, you gotta, you got you to gotta take time to get those guys down the field. And if you put, put some pressure on him, he's not going to be able to load up and throw that yeah, ball. Yeah, that, that's the only way we got – protection for Aaron we had you know five or six wow. guys blocking two I know and he, and he still had, he still had to step <laughs> up in the pocket to avoid uh, the rush Man, I almost <laughs> got to him that's Ralph, terrible who threw the uh, preseason uh, to Kenny Ubo with the Hail Mary who was the quarterback I don't remember I don't even remember the play right? you don't remember I think it was against the Giants that ended the game oh oh Ubo? yeah yeah uh, I know Strebler <laughs> No, it wasn't true. Well, what was it? Was, was Martinez or uh, Martinez, no? It was two, two years ago. Was it? Oh, it was two years oh, ago. Two years ago. <laughs> I can't remember this one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's trivia. Okay, listen. Uh, before we close out again, we invite you. This is our email: greenrewind at gmail .com. We want your letters and questions. Anything you want. If you want to ask us what Ralph ate for breakfast or what Ray fed his cats, feel free. It's greenrewind at gmail.com. Anything else, guys, about anything in the NFL, the Jets, the Steelers, no. anything? All right. No, I'm just thinking about what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow now. It's a trivia <laughs> question. Yeah. We should, Ray, we should actually have a contest. You got to guess the name of your cat because the cat is always on the air, which would be a good contest. All right. With that, yeah. we're, we're going to close it out for uh, Ray Clifford, Ralph Sharega, Marty Shupak. Let's go Jets. Until next time.